In this lecture, we will learn about uh, the Chomsky hierarchy and we will see some examples of uh, the Chomsky hierarchy. Uh, let's say there is a bigger circle which is representing uh, type 0 languages. Fine. So type 0 is what? Type 0 is actually telling us the unrestricted grammar or unrestricted languages or that we also known as the recursively enumerable language. Fine. So, uh, a subset of this type 0 language or the subset of all the languages will be in the type 0 because we have not applied any restriction but a subset of this will be a type 1 where we have applied some restriction and this will be a type 1 that is known as context sensitive grammar or context sensitive languages. Fine. If we apply more restriction to this, this actually becomes the type 2 language which is defined by the type 2 grammar and this is known as the context free. So this is a set of context free languages. Okay, And then a subset of this is actually known as the type 3 grammar which is producing the or which is defining the type 3 language which is the regular language. It means the bigger set is known as type 0 where we are not applying any restriction but once we have started applying the restriction it becomes type 1. If you apply more restrictions it becomes type 2. If you apply more restriction it becomes the type 3 language. Okay, You can also say that the type 3 language is actually a subset of type 2 language and obviously it is a subset of type 1 and obviously it is a subset of type 0 language. Similarly, the type 2 language is actually a subset of type 1 language which is also a subset of type 0 language. Similarly, a type 1 language is subset of type 0 language and similarly you can say that the type I plus 1 language is subset of type I language. It is quite understood that the type 3 is the subset of type 2 or type 1. And type 2 is the subset of type 1 and, and type 0. So obviously any type i plus 1 language will be subset of type i. Okay, Where i can range from 0, 1 and 2. Okay, Now let us take some examples. For example, A language is CFL but not regular language. We just have to find out if a language is context free but not regular. Is it possible actually? Let's see. Suppose there is a production of type S produces A capital A B. This actually this language is defining or this grammar is actually defining the language in which the non-terminal symbol is appearing between the two symbols on the right hand side. Since there is only one symbol on the left hand side, obviously it will either come in the context free language, or, uh, sorry, context free grammar or the regular grammar. So it is obviously the context free, only one symbol on the left hand side. But on the right hand side we have only one symbol that is non-terminal, so it can be regular, but since this uh, non-terminal symbol is appearing in between the two symbols it means this is middle linear so a middle linear grammar cannot be a regular so this is true because a language can be context free but not regular fine so it is possible that a language is context free but not regular 
let's take another example and it is saying that it, a language is context sensitive but recursively enumerable language okay since context sensitive language is a subset of recursively enumerable that it means this is a superset okay so it is not possible that a language is context sensitive but not a recursively enumerable language okay so this is not possible okay another example a language is recursively enumerable a language is recursively enumerable but not regular okay fine it is possible if a language is coming in this one recursively enumerable means this type 0 so it is not necessary that it should be regular also fine so this is a bigger set it is a smaller set so all languages of a recursively enumerable need not be of this regular so it is quite possible that a language is regular in a recursively enumerable but not regular now let's see a language is regular but not context sensitive this is not possible why if a language is context uh, if a language is regular it means this is a smaller part so this has to be the subset of this okay so context sensitive language means this type 1 so the bigger set so this type 3 is actually the subset of this type 1 or type 2 so this particularly is not possible okay so if a language is regular it has to be context sensitive also now let us discuss about the expressive power of the languages expressive power of the languages expressive power means the if if you are able to uh, express more number of the languages the language is more powerful if a language is able to uh, if, if a grammar is able to define the uh, less number of the languages it means it, it, its uh, expressive power is less fine so what can be the uh, language accepted by the finite automata okay the language that can be accepted by the finite automata is regular language okay and language accepted by push down automata another kind of the machine will be context free language and since a context free language can be implemented or represented the regular language can also be like can also be represented okay since because every context free language is a regular language so every regular language is the context free language so if it can be represented by the pda context free it means the regular can also be represented by that and the language accepted by the linear bound automata it means the type 1 those are context sensitive language and since context sensitive language is a big part bigger part context sensitive is just a part of that or subset of that so those can also be represented and regular can also be represented so all these three types of languages can be represented by the linear bound automata what are the languages accepted by the turing machine it is an unrestricted one the bigger part the biggest part so every language either it is context sensitive or context free or uh, regular language those are actually the subset of the, the, the type 0 or the recursively enumerable languages so recursively enumerable languages can also be implemented through the Turing machine context sensitive language can also be represented context free languages can also be represented regular languages can also be represented it means the expressive power of Turing machine is the highest one okay so expressive power of Turing machine it means type 0 is the most one is, is the highest one and then followed by the linear bound automata and then push down automata and the least expressive power is of the finite automata okay so we have dealt with the finding out what are the different kind of the automata and what are the languages represented by them okay 
so that four automata that we have discussed finite automata post turn automata linear bound automata the turing machine we have seen that the turing machine has the highest power to represent the languages okay so the expressive power of the turing machine is the highest one and expressive power of the finite automata is the least one thank you